I was just about to leave to my first flight lesson in Lahti, but then that orange mother in the dashboard comes on and I have to run the engine diagnostics on the car before I can go. This day couldn't start any better. The next day. Okay, so my car currently has this kind of problem. So I start the engine. That little family friendly content hasn't left. So I have to give it some of this thing and figure out what's wrong with it. I have to stuff this cable into the OBD port. Other end goes to the USB. So I have the diagnostic cable going to my laptop and I'm running a software called VCDS. And we're gonna use it to scan the fault gauge. It's gonna take some time for it to do its thing and after that it should tell us what's wrong with it. It will go through the control units one by one and there's gonna be all kinds of shenanigans going on in the car like the radio going on diagnostic mode and the instru instrument panel showing weird stuff. But it's fine during the diagnostics. And there we have our list. It says engine malfunction. And there are two problems apparently. Exhaust, exhaust pressure one, the signal is too high. This is a middle-aged German car, Audi, so it's highly probable that the sensor has failed, so we have to change the sensor. Let's see what else is going on. Diesel particulate filter, DPF, implausible signal. Not sure if that's the same sensor. Because it's a DPF related illness, Let's enable the regeneration from the coding 2 menu and enter the code 21295. The DPF light is on. Let's drive to a dealer that can sell us a new sensor. Because the idea of the DPF diesel particulate filter regeneration is that uh, the filter accumulates soot over time and you basically use the heat from the exhaust to burn off the soot therefore regenerating the filter. What you need to do is to generate much heat to the exhaust system and that's why you uh, use a bit smaller gear than you usually would. It might be uncomfortable driving a diesel car with so high RPM. I'm currently doing like 2500, but it should make the exhaust a bit hotter and make a bit, little bit better job for the regeneration. So far I have about 20-30 kilometers drive for the dealer. Average fuel consumption is up about 3 liters. So far everything's going like it should. I haven't left. I'm still driving and I haven't been left on the road. Still driving. Currently in traffic. Have to stop at the DPF. Uh, light just turned off. Okay, we're here. When we check under the hood, remove the engine cover, we can see the sensor right there. There are two tubes going out of it and the uh, cables for the wiring harness. So that is what we probably need to change. Motonet is the place to go if you are looking for a Bosch DPF air 
pressure sensor or an owl. Both can be found from the same place. So now we have the part and have to drive back home. But I'm gonna run the regeneration again. Two, one, two, nine, five. Then we click enter and it just gave the car a cancer. Close that and go home. I use this car for my daily commute to work, which is about 20 kilometers, and then back from there during kind of the rush hour. So I don't wonder if the DPF and the tubes that are connected to it are full of advertiser friendly content. Okay, so now we're back home. Let's go change the sensor. Here's some basic tools you're gonna need. A screwdriver and some bits. I think that one was done with some Torx bolts, so we're gonna use some Torx heads to get rid of the previous sensor. Okay. I have removed the engine covers and now it's time to get rid of the sensor itself. The sensor is also wrapped in a heat shield, so take off the heat shield and take care of your bolts so you don't drop them into the engine. The cable needs some sort of small flathead screwdriver to pry it open. There we have it, the cable is off. The screw is off, now that's just the two cable clamps holding it down. So move the hose clamps down the hoses and then you can just pull it off. And remember that the, if you have just driven the engine is quite hot. But then again, it's cold in here so it's rather pleasant to work at. The most important part of fixing things and putting spare parts in. Does the new part look like the old part? If it doesn't, don't put it in. I'd say close enough. There's one excess screw hole, but the connectors look the same. Inlets and outlets look the same. If it fits, it sits. So there we have it. The new sensor is installed. Only thing missing is the heat shield. Let's put it on. There we go, now it looks roughly like it should. Only thing missing is the engine cover, so... And that should take care of everything under the hood. Rest is office work. What we have to do now is to adapt the new sensor, aka some computer work. Key on, engine off. Done. Let's turn off the... AC off so it doesn't consume much power and same goes with the lights. You don't want the battery to run out while you're playing. We select the module. We go to the engine. We go to the coding tool. And what we want to do is the exhaust gas differential pressure sensor adaptation, which is the G450. So we need to enter the code from here, which is 30605. Then we click the do it button. Switch the power ignition off for 30 seconds. Let's give it 30 seconds. That was 30 something seconds. The VCDS lost the connection to the car. Well, that's no surprise and it should be fine. So the adaptation should be done now. Let's start the car. So far it didn't fall apart. I'm gonna turn the lights on so you can see what's on the screen. And as you can see the check engine light is still on. Now we have to tackle that. So we go to the engine controls. 
we check the fault codes there we have the PO473 which is what we were trying to fix here I have saved these earlier so I can just clear these and yes I want to clear these and so far I haven't gotten it back I am done and I can go back if you want to be all fancy and get a report you can run the diagnostic again to get a clean bill of what else is wrong with your car but as you can see the light is now gone only thing that is I'm getting yelled at is the handbrake and seat belt. Anyway, that has been my quick fix to the G450 sensor problem. So, hope I helped somebody and give the video a thumbs up if I did. Thanks for watching.